Hey everyone, so we're gonna try this again, and I'm not sure if it has anything to do with me, technology, or the storm that's rolling through, but we're gonna give this a go. So, thank you everybody for coming out and taking time off of your busy day to join me and us at this second interview of Cycling Secrets from the Saddle. So, what we're going to do is I, I'm going to introduce myself. My name is Sylvie Daou and a little bit about me while uh, we're waiting for Michelle to jump on is that I have been loving cycling for about 18 years. I can't believe 18 years. And, um, and it certainly has been a growing experience. All right, here she is. So... And bring my shell into the camera. Okay, so, so it's been an experience that I would never take back. And I, you know, encourage everybody who's considering cycling to get into it because it's just the most amazing thing you could ever do for yourself. Um, so a little bit, so 18 years, what does that entail? Well, that entails me being a beginner so a lot of like a lot of you maybe some of you don't remember where you started because you've been cycling for so long but I remember the day that I actually changed from my big ring to my small ring on a hill in Ottawa I can tell you exactly where it happened it was like a revelation just happened or like a bolt of lightning came down and I was like oh my god this is so much easier and it's just exploded from there so I can understand I can completely relate to you the beginner you the intermediate advance and you the racer I'm just hoping no answer from life you guessed and uh, so so yeah so that goes back and then from then I started a spinning studio and I got into, so that was 2001. <laughs> She's, this is going to be fun. Um, 2000, 2001, I started my spinning studio and I absolutely loved that for eight years. And then I quickly got into road cycling racing, but it didn't go, start in, before I experienced adventure racing. So I was first yeah. a mountain biker. Hey, oh my gosh. Whoa. So sorry. I was having phone issues. <laughs> this is hilarious. It's telling me not to turn my phone. And you are That's side. What I did. Okay, so, turn it that way that. then. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Yeah, All right. So this is Michelle. And Michelle, I'm just going through my intro of myself. And uh, so back to, I'm glad we got Michelle on here. So I'm just going to finish a little bit about myself and why I absolutely love cycling and why I started this in the first place. So, uh, so back to me. Um, so yeah, 2005 started into, uh, started a, a road cycling team, women's masters. And that's where I got into cycling racing. I mean, all of us were eight of us girls that I introduced and brought into our team. And I, and we all got into racing at the same time, like on all levels, nutrition, training, everything. And then, you know, from there I went on to gain, become a cycling coach. Um, I started a women's cycling club and I got my level three national cycling performance coaching certifications. So and now through my club, my women's only club, I've been, I've coached over 700 women. And I'm telling you, there's nothing more empowering than seeing people gain confidence on the bike and learning how to become one with their bicycle. Absolutely love it. So I'm a mom of three and I've also been on the IFBB fitness, a figure competition stage for bikini and uh, figure, uh, yeah, figure. So I've been in that realm before as well, but it always comes back to cycling, always. All right, so that's enough of me. And before I say, I just want to um, thank my good friend, Mike Bennett, 
for <laughs> allowing me to sit in his um, bike shop, and that's are his beautiful bikes oh, nice. um, in the background. Yeah, I thought this would be a really nice uh, background like setting over my office. <laughs> what do you think, Michelle? I like that. I know. Everybody can like oogle over the bikes, bike right. frames over there. <laughs> But uh, he's, uh, we'll talk about him later, but let's talk about Michelle. We've got a lot of great questions. I've got a lot of great questions for her. And so Michelle, I've known her for last three years, about two, three years. And uh, two years, time flies, man. And uh, so Michelle, she is, okay, I got a whole list here. I got to, got to read, I don't read. So she's, she um, before she got to university, okay, in high school, she was an elite gymnast. So this gives me the reasons that how she is so damn organized and in, in putting everything into balance. Because my daughter was a is was a provincial uh, gymnast, and oh my gosh, mm -hmm. the dedication to training mm -hmm. is immense. And she, she's not even gymnastics anymore, but she still has it in her, which is phenomenal. Um, so she's gone on to get a bachelor's degree in kin, kinesiology and exercise science from University of Houston. Then she's got, she's a mom of two gorgeous girls. Uh, she's worked 17 years as a firefighter and advanced paramedic. 17 years as a firefighter, everybody. I love seeing women in those kind of jobs. And now she has recently been promoted, I think in the last year or so, right? Yeah. To assistant fire chief with the Houston Fire Department. So, of course, that's where you're going to find her in Houston somewhere. Um, and now she has uh, been um, an elite. She's an elite age group for Ironman as an Ironman athlete. She has raced and qualified for half I am world championships. Congratulations. Has been at the USAT I am Ironman all world athlete. Not sure what that is, but it sounds significant. And she is also on team Isogenics with me. And I just have to do some, a couple PBs because those are always important for Ironman athletes or triathletes. So here it goes. So P, so half IM PB is four hours and 55 seconds. Ironman, 11 hours, 26 seconds and 26 minutes uh, and 36 seconds. A half marathon, <laughs> an hour 37. Wow. And her 40K time trial is an hour five. And you know what? I've done a 45, 40K time trial. And I think mine was pretty close to that too. It was a good downhill. Cool. Power. So, <laughs> welcome, Michelle. I love you being here. Look at that smile. Ah, how can I? So, now the questions. So, the first one, I'd love you to tell us what life was like before Ironman or triathlons. Can you remember back that far? Oh yeah, she's also been in tri she's been in triathlon since 2007, so it's over well 11 years. So tell us. Right, right. So, um before I I've always been athletic um, and loved sport. Um I had to stop the gymnastics thing once I hit high school cuz I just got way too tall and they didn't make the equipment adjust my height then. So um, so I found some other things. I did diving in high school and then growing up, um, I kind of got out of shape for a period of time, but I wanted to be in the fire service and I had to pass that crazy fitness exam to get in. So I started running a little bit, just enough to get by and uh, working on my upper body strength and everything. And, um, and then most of my life before triathlon was involved around the fire department, um, work out with some of the firefighters and do we have like a firefighter challenge that you can it's like a little competition and fire gear and stuff and I did that for a bit uh, but I didn't really discover fire or a triathlon until after I had my two daughters and um, that's how I got into it is because I was having to work in an administrative light duty position mm -hmm. um, during my pregnancies and my pregnancies were just back to back my girls 
or 17 months apart. So um, I was just trying to find something to motivate me to get back into shape so I could get back out to the fire station as quick as possible. And somebody told me, hey, why don't you sign up for this little, you know, sprint triathlon they're having locally. And I didn't even know what the sport was. And um, I said, sure, why not? And tried it out and fell in love with it. So. Yeah. You know what? I don't think it was as big as it is now back 11 years. I think it was very starting to to grow. Yeah. I tried my first one in 1999. (laughs) I know. Wow. It was, that was, that was here. So, um, but it, after that, I was just like, Oh, triathlons. I I did two and that was it. I'm like, I'm moving on. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but you know what you what you say about um getting back into shape is not uncommon for a lot of women who right. are looking for something to motivate them to get back into shape after kids and right. so i think you probably fall into that that category with a lot of ladies on you know but what drove you to it so you know then like you did your first triat your first sprint like what drove you to go further? I had a few friends in the fire department. We were all kind of training as a group and that was their big thing is they wanted to do it. That time it was the half iron man was like the, the big epic race to try to try to get to. Cause we were just doing sprints and I was on a mountain bike trying to race, you know, <laughs> it was pretty funny. Um, but we trained together and we kind of pushed each other and we actually I bet you kicked some guys butts anyways I was totally <laughs> even but then they actually let me loan me my first to try out a road bike which I loved and that's when I found out I love cycling after I got off the mountain bike trying to race <laughs> and um and I and that and found out that that was my strength but I think that's why I fell in love with long distance triathlon racing because the cycling part is so long and that's my favorite part of the of the sport um but uh anyways i just started started trying we started trying longer and longer races and then we finally progressed to where we did that first half iron man and i did pretty good and beat them and uh (laughs) now that's motivation enough don't you think you beat a couple guys i think i need to do more (laughs) that is right but uh but no i really um, I just fell in love with the, the training period. I like the discipline that it, that it took and just that kind of getting into that routine. And I was always fit. I could do my job easily um, with no problem because my cardiovascular fitness and my muscular endurance, it just kind of worked everything in. And I enjoyed the training almost as much as I enjoyed the racing. Ah, yeah. Well, that's a long distance. And I remember like, I used to mountain bike too, and then I got into road cycling to train for mountain biking. Then I completely made the switch. I was like, enough of that. I can ride from my, you know, front door. But so, so how long did it take you to move from like, you know, a sprint to an Ironman? And knowing what you know now, what kind of advice would you give to those people who like wake up one day and decide to do an Ironman? <laughs> known a few people but it took me I didn't attempt my first Ironman until 2009 um, okay. and so I spent a few years and I mean I see people all the time and part of it is because I wanted to when I did my first one I went to actually you know competitively race it um, so I so I trained longer and really made sure I had a real good base um, established with my endurance and that I had a lot of race experience, um, just did all the distances before trying to jump into that. So yeah, um, you can I do think it. That key, that key word you just said was race experience. That's huge. It That's is huge. huge. And um, sometimes, because like I spent uh, eight years road cycling racing, but sometimes getting to that race is that experience too but it is a lead up to it's a little bit different because you know going to like you know my longest road race let's say was like 100 kilometers so 
I could ride a hundred kilometers, no problem. But going out and racing is a bit different because it's like three right. times the speed. <laughs> and, and, right. and just, but like, yeah. And um, so I think, you know, just having that race experience from the small races is pretty key, wouldn't you say? It is. And you also have to kind of on those steps up because I the way I race a sprint is very different from the way I would pace and race a half or a full Ironman. Um, so that took time to develop those skills and, and know how hard to push and just know, come to know my body, really. Mm-hmm. Learning how my body could perform and under different conditions and things. So learning how to race smart so that I can finish strong and do my best performance. Race smarter, <laughs> not harder. That's right. the key word in racing and training. Yes. <laughs> All right. So now you've gone there. And before I want to go to the nutrition part, mm-hmm. I followed you and you were in a crazy training phase for this race that was huge. And I can't remember what it was. Was it in Texas or was it in Florida or was it somewhere else where you didn't end up finishing? Like you were so close. Yeah, that was yeah. Florida. And I was okay. having a great race. Michelle, I want you to talk about this because, you know, a lot of people go in, and I know you're completely prepared and you've been to races and you know what, what it is to race. But just your feeling on how you felt like You've been so prepared and you were so close to finish. We're all watching you because like your husband, Steve, is like posting. And she's like, oh, she's, oh, she's awesome. She's in, I don't know, fourth place or fifth place or something crazy like that. And talk about it. For, for this one, and unfortunately, it wasn't my first Ironman to, to fall apart. This time, was it? because of an injury I have from fire department. I have some degenerative discs in my lower back. And, uh, and it goes back to, I was prepared in every aspect for that race, but I had neglected my strength training, um, just trying to fit everything else in. And so when it came to that run, I just took a funny step and it caused my disc to just flare up and I tried for a while but it just got too bad and I've been down that road before so I had to I had to make the smarter decision and stop so that I would actually be able to recover faster um in the yeah past, how far how far we or how close were you to finishing um I think I was at mile when I actually stopped I was at mile six 16 or 17. So I had like less than 10 miles to go out of 140. Well, that's still, um, that's still far enough when you're in pain. It was far. Yeah, it was far. <laughs> I, w- I was walking for a while before I finally said, okay, I gotta, I have to stop. But uh, yeah, yeah that, but- was a, that was a tough day, but it's part of what you learn in that long distance racing. You've got to, you've got to really be smart and you've got to really not neglect any part of the training it's important that you don't just focus on you know your cardio workouts and your you got to do the strength training and core training is really important for triathletes because we just have really weak glutes and core typically (laughs) and you've got to focus on that strengthening really it's true we (laughs) that's tell me about that so you got really strong we have really strong hamstrings we have really Mm. relatively weak glutes and hamstrings and that's something you've got to really focus on and and work on that into your technique like I've been really focusing on that and it's made my cycling and my running just improve Uh, but it's taken some focused work so what have you implemented since then because have you raced since then um I raced Ironman Texas okay uh, back but that was a year ago, so not this past year. Um, I'm mm-hmm. taking kind of this year off from racing, but I'm going to race next year, next June, Boulder, Colorado. It's going to be my Ironman. So, I oh, like the wow. I love my the mountain God. races because people can't draft on the bike course. They can't what? They can't draft. You have a lot of oh. flat courses. There's just been a real big drafting problem. In triathlon, you're not allowed to draft. And At all, eh? I thought Olympic distance you could. 
Um, there are. They have allowed it for some um, Olympic distance racing. Uh, but for Ironman, half Ironman, you're not allowed to draw. You can't even get within. They keep changing it, but it's like I think it's six bike links now from the person <laughs> in front of you. But but they've been they do it a lot in the flat courses, which is frustrating to somebody, you know, like me that's actually trying to compete. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I know. Oh, what a shame you can't draft. Drafting yeah, is God. awesome. It is awesome, <laughs> but, but not for the racing. So. So I so, like mountain horses. All right. So I posted a picture of you, and I think it's from 2015 to 2016. Now, that I want you to talk about because that's when you made a quantum shift in your nutrition, and it changed your physique. And I want you to tell, tell me, like, before and after, like, what were you kind of doing before? Because – when you're training that much and you have to recover and you have to eat like a beast to keep the energy up, what were you doing before and how did you switch it up? Yeah. So before, when you see that, that before picture and I just look like I'm inflamed, I was actually very fit, but I just I always was really bloated and carrying a lot of inflammation and a lot of that stemmed from, I was a typical endurance athlete. Um, I was, for all my race fueling, I was just living off of the, you know, sugars and goos and all the little sweet gummy things, whatever, to fuel me through. Um, and, and that was creating a lot of inflammation in my body. Um, outside, I was never mm. recovering well. Um, I was always tired and I would get sick frequently uh, just because of the constant stress from training, uh, stress from work and raising girls and and, uh, and I just couldn't recover from my workouts. Um, no matter how much I ate, I ate generally, you know, healthy. Um, I didn't eat a lot of junk food and I tried to feel as much as I could, but I could just, I never felt good. Mm -hmm. um, so that was the pre. Um, then I met uh, my current coach and now my husband, Stephen <laughs> Bentley. Kind of funny. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> And she was very persistent and was telling, helping me figure out. Cause another thing I was frustrated with was just my race fueling period, which was always my downfall in long distance, you know, mm -hmm. Ironman distance racing. Um, so he was helping me figure that out. And he introduced me to his nutrition system um, and just had me told me, you know, I was at the point where I tried everything else um, and nothing was working for me. Uh, and I had a big race coming up in the spring. So that picture you see was in the fall, um, like late November. And the next picture you see was in the like late March of, of that oh, following okay. year. Um, wow. The difference, but the shift actually happened over a period of about, I stayed like that picture looked right up until about February. And so that shift happened over like less than, less than a few weeks, really, um, from, from looking like I did there to the to the after photo and that was all by incorporating that new nutrition into my uh training and daily life um and within two weeks of of starting it i mean i noticed a difference in how quickly i recovered mm -hmm. from my workouts i was able to work harder and i didn't have to train as much because i was getting more quality workouts when i did my training which was great for my you know, family life and with the kids, because mm -hmm. uh, I had freed up more time. Um, and with my inflammation and just the physical changes I had, I mean, so quickly within two weeks, all that inflammation that I was carrying was gone out of my system. I felt better. Um, I wasn't getting sick. I really rarely get sick now. So that's so amazing. It just that's really showed me the importance. So when did you start that new nutritional system? Was it in the fall? And then it kind of. I didn't start till he was trying to convince me for a few months before I was like, <laughs> skeptical. Um, yeah. Know, typical. I think I know everything. And I was the kinesiologist with a nutrition background and I was doing what I needed to do. But, but as you know, I, and I, as much as I could try, I would eat, you know, healthy and organic and I was spent a lot of time preparing meals and, you know, gosh, how much time I put into that. 
And, um, and I could not get the results. There's just not the quality in our food system uh, mm-hmm. as far as like all the, it's lacking yeah. the minerals and things that our bodies need to really recover and function like they're supposed to. So um, once he finally convinced me, it was February. And so I started February and I raced in March and had a PR on my half Ironman with very little training. Um, wow. I, I've been um, having you know, just issues before that with an injury. So I had a few weeks of training and with the new nutrition it was amazing difference. Yeah. Cause it looks like a big, like, I can't believe that picture was over two to three weeks difference. Oh yeah. Like it's just oh, yeah. unbelievable. Like I thought it was like a couple months, but <laughs> you know what? It does make sense because, um, you know, and, and I always say like when I talk to my, my clients is like training smarter, not harder and having good nutrition in your body really does affect everything like sleep, recovery, um, having the energy to do those hard workouts. And I imagine that you did harder workouts that were shorter, not longer. Is that kind of some of the things that were, that changed in your training program? Yes. Yes. And, and then I would recover so much faster than I used mm-hmm. to after those workouts. And um, so just the quality of each workout that I did, I was getting much more benefit from it. Um, and so I just didn't have to train the million hours that I used to train. Um, now know, what everybody's for doing full Ironman is like what I used to train for a, for a half Ironman. Um, my last Jeez. Ironman, I literally trained for 10 weeks because, because of that injury. And I, and I wow. PR'd my, 20 minutes. Okay, everybody, you can't train just for 10 no, weeks for an Ironman. You, you have to have a really good base of a, men, of a couple years before doing that. But the thing is that if you have the base and you train smartly, you do not have to put in all that time. And the faster you can recover is like, you know, the faster you can bring your heart rate down to go at the next interval. And if overtraining is one of those things that your heart rate never drops, you have a hard time sleeping, you're just always tired. And that is a big sign of overtraining. And that's where you get sick, you get injured. Yeah. And, you know, it, I've seen it so many times, three weeks from the, their main race, sick, yeah. out on their back, like they can't race. Um, and uh, it's so important, so important. Amy hey, Shaw, like what you know now, right? If I only had known when I started, I'd be so much further ahead. So I wish I yeah. wish I'd, you know, been introduced to him a lot earlier. But uh, but I'm thankful for the progress I'm seeing now and how much I've improved. And that's one note I do want to say is that you know, since incorporating that, literally, I, my speed has improved by 15%, um, you know, across all, across all of the entire sport, you know, all three, my running, my cycling, um, and my heart rate has actually done the opposite and dropped, you know, 15 beats per minute. It's kind of funny, the match. So, and uh, so it's awesome. That's awesome conditioning. You're conditioning yeah. well. And if you met him earlier, imagine what would have happened if you met Steve earlier. <laughs> we will have Steve on here later on. Um, but uh, yeah, because yeah. triathlon is, you know, there's so many people getting in there and then, and I, you know, I hear, you know, how do you fit it all in? So this is another, th- this is the next one. How do you fit it in with life business? So like, give me, um, Give me a rundown of like your busiest training day with work and what day, what, it, what day is that? So with, or is work, that every day? Now, right now, <laughs> right now I'm kind of in my whole, I'm going to start doing my Iron Man training. So it'll pick up a bit, but, but like during my busiest times, I have to get up at about three forty-five or four o'clock in the morning and I'll do my morning workout, which is usually like an hour, a little over an hour, maybe. And, uh, and then I head into work and, and I mean, my current position, I'm really always 
working. I'm always on call, but, but I, I go into the office, you know, four or five days a week where I actually drive downtown and, and, um, put in a 10 hour day and then come back in the afternoon. And sometimes I'll have an afternoon workout and that I, that I'll have to fit in. It's about another hour. And, uh, and then I sleep really well that night. So, okay. That's, is that two hours of working out? A day during the week. Now that's during the, my heaviest training for Ironman, but really now, and that's what my old training really used to look like now. I mean, if I'm honest, I really do about an hour of training a day, even for Ironman, because like I said, I'm getting a lot more quality workouts in. Now this next go round, I'm really wanting to go for that world qualifying position. So I'll probably train a little more intensely than, you know, than I have been in the past, but, uh, but I'm, I get such good quality out of my workouts out now that I can do an hour a week, you know, an hour a day during the weekdays. And then I do my long stuff on the weekends. Right. Um, so, but, but I'm a morning person. Does that I include like your swimming? What's that? Does, that? does that include your swimming? Yeah. So to, to get all the training for Ironman, pretty much you have to do like two workouts a day during the week yeah. and then your long long workouts on the weekends. So I do the swimming right. too. Um, so you save your long <laughs> swim for the weekend or do you get that? So you just do short swims during the week and then some like everything, like all the long stuff is kind of on the weekend. I've got to look at what he puts together for me this year, but <laughs> like, uh, we're on I, vacation. I'm not so the like... man. <laughs> I do not like to swim very much at all. Um, I've got this new, it's called a Vasa trainer. So it's kind of like you have your bike trainer. Well, this thing I'm, oh, yeah. I'm laying on the bench and it's so effective and I love it because, you know, I can get a really good tough workout in on that thing. And it trans it's translated really well into when I jump into the water and, and it's made my swim times just improve. So what is that again? Is that that home based swimming yeah. pool? No, okay. this is no. this is like a bench that you lay on that kind of slides back and forth and you have little hand paddles on cables and you do go through the swimming motion while you're laying on this bench and it's got a power meter and everything on it. Shut so the front door. Awesome. Really? <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, yeah, can you I just show to that to us? Can you pan that over? Do you have it right beside you? It's it's upstairs. I'd have to run. Oh, okay. Oh my god. Okay, you have to take a picture and put that in the comments below. Oh yeah, I will do that. I want to see that. <laughs> so it's you don't even have to go to a pool. I don't, and that's made it great for me because during the week I just can do that, and then I can. I don't like the chlorine and stuff, so that <laughs> saved my hair. And then I can just do my open water swim practices when it gets closer to racing and, uh, or, you know, a couple of times a month and, and, and that's good. And it's that amazing is how it's improved my swim. Awesome. For anybody who doesn't like getting in the pool, I can do that. Yeah. Or the, or the <laughs> Not that I want to do that. Technique, because it forces you to do good technique. So you really develop mm -hmm. good swim technique. All right. So let's though. wrap. Uh-huh. <laughs> I, I have to see and a picture. It's a tough workout. Yeah. Wow. So you don't find that you're pulling harder with your shoulder, like your, like your rotator cuff isn't like, like you're still getting the, the same to get. technique. Oh yeah, you get into a really good position. I'll show you. I'll do a little video demonstration and. Show okay, you, you have to do that because like. I'll do it. That's amazing. So and then, are your daughters jumping in with your training at all? They do. They'll go out and run with me. Both of them are really good runners, and uh, and they're both good swimmers too. They used to jump in the pool whenever I was doing the pool swimming. But they'll get on that Vasa trainer and do a little workouts. It's pretty funny. Oh, so. that's super cool. All right, so we we fit in the train. Okay, so just to wrap up, you said so. What's your goal moving forward? I think you mentioned it. So I still have this goal. I I I've done the half Ironman you know, world championship. I would love to go to Kona and race the full Ironman distance. And, and I think I've got all the things together now that I need it. I've got my nutrition down and recovery down and I've got an amazing coach. Um, so I'm ready to really. That you're married to, which makes it nice. Like, 
you got to fit in the the vacation and um the... they can plan the training all around and, and incorporate it in so uh so it's pretty awesome uh, so that's my goal is i'm signing up for for iron man boulder for next year uh, next june it'll be next june um and then the plan is to uh have an incredible race and hopefully earn my qualifying spot for that following October. For oh, wow. Okay. So next year is going to be the year. That is my year. That's what I'm going All right. And I'm aging up to the masters. I'll be in the masters category, the four <laughs> That makes yeah. all the difference. You know that, eh? I can't wait. <laughs> I know when I moved into a master's, like a higher category, like, well, from I went into like, uh, no, I didn't race in my 40s, but my older, like in my later 30s, I mean, that was like, <laughs> then I was like, you know, kicking some butt. But before I was like racing with all the younger girls and holy moly, that's hard. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, awesome, Michelle. Now, do you have any quick tips? Because um, if anybody has questions, please put them in the comments and we'll get to them later on um, when this is finished up and um, it's downloaded. So please feel free to ask anything, uh, both of us. Um, I, ha I work with athletes, like triathletes on nutritional timing. Uh, Michelle works with them too when she has time outside of everything else. Um, but uh, do you have any quick tips to leave, leave us with? Uh, you know, a, a couple of the key ones that I've just picked up along the way as a triathlete is uh, don't skimp on your sleep. You know, that's really important mm -hmm. for recovery too. And I, I learned it's better if I'm really tired to just get that get that rest in instead of trying to wake up extra early to fit in a workout that's really not going to affect my overall, you know, training yes. program. I used to never miss a workout, but I realized <laughs> that's not helping me. It's better to listen to your body. Um, yeah. Don't, don't forget strength training. That's very important. Um, yeah. don't, it's not all about the cardio. Strength training is very important and it'll make you a faster racer overall. And, um, and quick, quick race fueling tip. I'll give you a, one of Steve's secrets that he passed on to me, but, uh, it really helped me with race fueling is that separate out, separate out your fuel and your water and your electrolytes. And a lot of people like use things that are a mixture like I used to do, but it's a lot easier if you keep everything separate because you can adjust it based on conditions and how you're feeling mm. what you need. So I always keep my, my salt and my electrolytes separate. Take the, I, I use a, something called base salt that, you know, that I can adjust my dosage and, and oh, take it as good. I keep straight water in my bottles and, and, you know, my fuel was in a separate bottle and that way oh, okay. it's all mixed together and I can take as I need, adjust it out and then yeah. have everything combined. Yeah. Awesome. That's a good tip. So keep everything separate. Don't try and mix it all up. And one last question. So how much whole foods and this, this like nutrition, cause like how much whole foods do you kind of bring with you when you're racing? Like, I don't know. I, cause ra cycling racing is different from like for me, cause I bring like, um, like sweet potato, um bagels cut up something with peanut butter jam things like that and i've raced with um wraps and things that i put like together. while you're racing you're eating that oh my god yeah well see the thing is that i'm cycling for four hours i'm not oh right i'm not swimming biking running um right. but this isn't this is a, a great secondary um interview is talking about nutritional timing but the thing is that for, I mean, it's different. You're 14 hours. I'm maximum like four on the longest road race. So yeah. I will literally, like I bring, I, I bring food I, <laughs> and I bring gels and I bring other stuff, but I go through my whole foods first and I leave the gels to the very end um, for that last 45 minutes, like when I'm close to the finish. Um, but uh, yeah, I've been mad. I've mowed down on like a wrap with peanut butter jam and cheese in it, <laughs> well, <we got> it. <laughs> but think I, about it, carbs, fats, yeah. and sugars. 
And, uh, and I literally probably eat that over two hours. Like, well, you wouldn't believe me if I told you what I do now, because I, I used to do everything. I've tried everything. And I told you I had a lot of problems with race fueling on the long distance because it was all, it'd always be okay. I could handle it on the bike, but you get to the run and my gut would shut down and I'd be a mess. So part of that with that whole nutrition program, I do a lot of incorporate a lot of cleansing and intermittent fasting. Mm -hmm. um, and I've actually trained my body. The last Ironman I raced, I didn't, the only fuel I use is like a super starch. And I was using less than, uh, on the bike, I was using less than, like, right at about 80, 80 to 100 calories an hour on that. Yeah. That. So, so, yeah, it's like 100 calories an hour, roughly. And, um, whereas before, I would take it in, like, 700 and something calories an hour when I would race in Ironman. Well, I was doing 100 calories an hour on the bike, and less than that on the run, I maybe was getting... 60 to 80 calories of that an hour because I've gotten my body so locked into burning fat as its fuel source. And that's right. a whole nother story because that took time to get to that level. That's something yeah. I work with Steve on a lot. And I literally raced my last Ironman um, with a total of, what was our, what was the calories, Steve, that came out to him trying to remember? 2000? Like, yeah, it, it probably averaged out to maybe 70 calories an hour for the entire race for an 11 hour race. So nothing. Wow. Like 700 right. to 800, 900 calories. Yeah, well, we have to talk about this another time. And I think next time what we'll do is we'll bring you and Steve and we'll talk about, but when I raced with that, that was like 2013 and 2012 back then. And I didn't start the, the nutritional system that you started on till 2013, which I used right. and I had my strongest cycling season ever. Like, yeah. it was yes. like rock star, like amazing. And then I retired. So, <laughs> so but anyways, so I want to thank you. Oh, oh, oh there's Steve. Oh, Steve, I'm talking to Mike. Um, I want to thank you, Michelle, for coming out and uh, say hi to Steve there because I said we're going to be bringing him on later on as our coach. <laughs> and um, and uh, it's been amazing. And I love all the, you know, the tips and the content you brought in. And I hope a lot of our triathletes, Ironman athletes will, you know, get something out of this and reach out to myself or you for some extra advice. Um, I give free consultations on nutrition. So uh, please reach out to me um, and uh, we're going to continue on next week. So next week we're going to be in this shop and we're going to be talking to bike owner uh, Mike Bennett and everything you need to know well not everything about the industry of cycling and how he got to design his own frames and start painting custom paint jobs so stay tuned next week for that you have to check it out and thanks everybody please comment uh put comments or likes below if you have questions for us and we can get back to you thank you have an amazing wednesday Bye, Michelle. Yeah.